In today's video, we are going to check out the time Poland saved the world in the battle for Warsaw. Now, if you do enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. You guys make the difference. Let's check it out. Those of us who live in places of the world that have not had their very existence threatened in living memory tend to forget how fragile order actually is. Everything that you love, your family, your country, your freedom, those things that are taken for granted actually have defined boundaries. Those things exist because men stand ready to do violence and defend them in the night against those who would take them away from you. There is a place, a frontier of sorts, where such men have stood guard for centuries. A place where East has repeatedly collided with West. A rampart which shielded the Western world against enemies many were not even aware existed. The Mongols, the Tatars, the Ottomans, and merely 100 years ago, the Soviet communists who were keen to push their totalitarian ideology westward. This is the story of a long forgotten battle in which Poland overcame the enemy and by so doing may well have changed the fate of Europe and of the world. It this guy has an incredible voice, very soothing, very relaxing, uh, a joy to listen to. I, I just want to mention the, the point that he initially made of how if you if you don't necessarily know war in your in your living memory, which to be fair, I do not. Uh, most people in England don't. Yes, you see you see things on TV, but we haven't had to live through anything like that. And yes, you possibly don't appreciate what certain people do to protect your perceived freedoms. Um, and after after looking at lots of videos, you soon realize actually Poland have protected the the West of Europe a lot. Uh, there has been a lot of attempted invasions from the East and Poland seemed to always be there as the wall um, and sometimes as the pawns. Um, and so I think we have to be sort of grateful. It's the story of the Battle of Warsaw, the miracle you've never heard of. To understand the story, we need to go back in time. In 1918, from the ashes of the First World War, after 123 years of occupation, Poland rose again. To the east, in Russia, just a year earlier, Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks took power following the October Revolution. This huge turning point in world history did not happen overnight. The seeds of revolution were planted 70 years earlier by Karl Marx in his Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital. The critique of private ownership and of the right to accumulate capital, the hatred of traditional values. These were some of the intellectual underpinnings of Lenin and his followers. The new and better world they sought to build required the dismantling and ruin of the previous system. The Russia revolt was replaced with a new Bolshevik state. As the communists consolidated power, they became keen on exporting their ideology. They proclaimed the need for the dictatorship of the proletariat and agitated for a worldwide communist revolution. It shows you how easy it is for certain people and groups to get their ideas to be followed by the masses. Quite often it's simple slogans, it's, it's creating diversity. Uh, and, and what you see is the far left is bad, right? The far right is bad. We really do need something just in the middle. Just in the middle would be perfect, right? Um, but these are the sort of scenes that we see, have seen throughout, especially recent history. You know, what did the Nazis do? How did they get power? Because, you know, it was mental. Um, and then how did, how did Lenin get power? Because they were able to convince people of their beliefs, even if they were completely mental. Soviet leadership expected a revolution in economic crisis ridden Germany. But to support communist revolution there, Poland needed to be conquered first. 
Unlike old powers that were tired and broken by war, Poland had just reclaimed its independence and Poles were fervently rebuilding and consolidating their country. They sought to strengthen that which the occupiers had tried to crush, their culture, language and faith. The Bolsheviks needed to extinguish a reawakening Poland as fast as possible. Not only did it stand completely at odds with their values, it was also their bridge into Western Europe. And so, the Bolshevik Revolution moved west, carried forward by the bayonets of the Red Army, recruited from the very lowest echelons of society. The communists preached freedom and equality, but they brought misery and death. General Tukhachevsky's order from the 2nd of July 1920 read, To the west, over the corpse of white Poland lies the road to worldwide conflagration. On our bayonets we will bring happiness and peace to the toiling masses of mankind. Uh, uh, oh. The the word they used about what they were pushing of of equality, it's not equality, is it? Because there is always that person or people at the top that are above. They get the luxuries, right? Yes, maybe most other people below are sort of equal, but it's equal at such a low level that there's no opportunity to raise higher, to, to achieve more, is there? That's the problem with these. And it's not, I said, it, it's 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 the far left and same right and, and, and far right. I don't see any difference. Yes. Uh, no, I don't see any difference. There is always that one group of people or person at the top that does what they want and everyone else is suppressed. That's what it is. To the west, onward to Berlin over the corpse of Poland. It wasn't just the independence of Poland that was at stake in the Battle of Warsaw. If the Soviets managed to break the Poles and push west into Germany, communist revolution may have been successfully ignited and Europe may have fallen to the Soviets. The Soviets moved through Poland at the remarkable rate of 32 kilometers a day. By the beginning of August 1920, the vanguards of the Soviet army had reached the outskirts of Warsaw. The Poles were unwilling to give up their newly acquired independence. The nation came together and mobilized its resources. A volunteer army was created. In total, over 100,000 Poles would join from all walks of life. Peasants and aristocrats, students and workers, boy scouts and intellectuals alike enlisted to defend Poland. Polish women were not idle either, with thousands enlisting in the Voluntary Legion of Women, a female paramilitary. Civilians gathered food and medical supplies and church pews filled up as Poles prayed for victory over the Bolshevik armies. Volunteers from abroad also joined the Poles. Americans formed the Kostruszka Volunteer Flight Squadron, the French sent an advisory group and the Hungarians supplied ammunition. The Soviets advanced, confident in victory. However, the Polish military intelligence had successfully decrypted the Red Army's radio messages and the Poles prepared themselves for the oncoming onslaught. On the 13th of August, the Battle of Warsaw finally started. The die was cast. This was a war of worlds, freedom against oppression, faith against godlessness, the right to work, create and own against complete subjugation to the state, the individual against the collective. This was a battle between Western civilization and communist totalitarianism. It was here, on the outskirts of Warsaw, that in August of 1920, the fate of the world was to be decided. On the 14th of August, Father Ignacy Skorupka marched with the 236 Infantry Regiment of the Volunteer Army and died in battle allegedly as he led a charge with his crucifix in hands, thus becoming a symbol of the battle for Warsaw. And against all odds, the Poles prevailed. It took the tactical genius of Field Marshal Piłsudski, General Rozwadowski and General Haller, the courage of Polish soldiers and the mobilization of the whole country to overcome the Soviets. At the end of the 15th of August, the Soviet advance was finally halted, and on the next day, Field Marshal Piłsudski led the successful Polish counteroffensive. Since the victory occurred on the Feast of the Assumption, the battle came to be known as the miracle of the Vistula. <laughs> the Bolshevik horde, which was meant to enter Europe over Poland's dead corpse and assist German communist workers, was not only stopped, but turned back and contained. Remember that your freedoms are not free. They are hard fought and paid for in blood. Do not waste this gift. Wow. That was brilliant. A few things then. Incredible that you got that footage. That footage is incredible. Them on the battlefield. Wow, that is just amazing. It's amazing. There's one thing looking at images, but actually seeing the, the, the films of them, 
it just insane. And so I say I don't like nationalism. I think nationalism is a really bad thing because nationalism is basically thinking your country, your way of life is better, is better than another country. And I know some people have commented saying, well, nationalism is what has kept Poland going. It's what has allowed Poland to fight. I don't think it's nationalism. I don't necessarily think the Poles think that Poland is better than any other country. I'm not saying they think it's worse. I'm just thinking it's not better because that's not that's not right. Why should you think that your country is better than them? I think this is a sign of patriotism um, and knowing and fighting for your country because your country is worth fighting for. And I do think there is a clear distinction between nationalism, which I think is bad, and patriotism or patriotism, uh, where you believe your country is good, not better necessarily, but is a great place to be and to be from. Um, and that's what I think is constantly shown by the Poles throughout history. Um, I bring back the comment about how Poland really has been the, the wall for Europe, hasn't it? The amount of, of different armies that have come through thinking we're just going to walk over um, and Poland have been like, no, I don't think so. And actually it has made the life of the Brits, the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese so much safer because we haven't had to face the same violence and, and, and assault as the Poles have had. Um, and so, yeah, the Poles should be commended for that. They really, really should. It's, it's amazing, amazing to see these stories, amazing to hear about them, things that I didn't learn in school. Why We wouldn't have learned anything like this in school. So it's really, really pleasing to, to know that actually it's not all the Yanks that have gone in and saved the day. It's not just the Brits that have gone and saved the day, uh, which you always, always seem to hear. That That is what is normally the, the perception that is given from our teachings. Um, an awesome story. Uh, really, really awesome story. Maybe if that priest didn't run with his cross in his hand, he may have survived. Duck, dodge and dive, you know. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any other videos that you recommend me watching, not just not just war ones, maybe comedies, um, adverts. Yeah, that's a good idea because I do like watching adverts, just never on my own TV. Uh, please go into the Discord and put them in the suggested or you can comment on the video. Like subscribe because it really helps the channel out and I'll catch you next time.